has there been anything in your life that you've ever wanted so badly? You were so desirous of it. You had such a hunger for it that you couldn't stop thinking about it. Could have been a career move. Could have been when you're a kid, a, a car. It could have been a relationship. It could have been anything, but you were obsessed. You wanted to make this happen. You wanted to attract this to your life. You, want to, you just wanted something and you didn't even know how to get it but it was so compelling to you. You kept thinking about it every day, envisioning it, imagining it, feeling it. And then stuff happened. And suddenly you started to attract people or situations to your life and it just came together. Like you didn't even have a total plan. It was just that it was so a part of your focus with so much intensity and emotion so often that it sensitized you to notice anything that could get you there. There's a part of your brain called the reticular activating system. For short, we call it the RAS. That part of your brain determines what you notice in the world. And it's really important because when you set a goal, when you get really clear in a vision, and there's strong enough reasons, and you review it enough, and it becomes a part of you, that part of your brain says, anything that relates to this, I need to notice. It's like, did you ever buy a certain kind of car or maybe a, a certain outfit, and suddenly you see that car everywhere, or those outfits everywhere? Well, you know, the cars were always around, but why do you see it now? Because your RAS knows this is important. This is part of my world now. Similarly, when you really get clear and it's compelling and you're reviewing it every day, got strong reasons and you're reviewing it every day and you're feeling it, the brain becomes incredibly acute at noticing anything to get you to move forward. And so that's the power of this. So, you know, what do people do with a New Year's resolution? They come up with something they kind of want. It's not a compelling vision. They don't really have strong enough reasons and they never review it again until they notice that they broke what they said they really want to have make happen because they didn't really resolve. If you resolve, you got the vision, it's compelling, you review it daily and you feel it, you envision it and you experience it. Simple as it sounds. If you have powerful goals well designed and plenty of them to stir your imagination, here's what they will do. Goals become like a magnet. And the bigger they are and the stronger they are and the longer the list and the more things you'd like to acquire during the course of your lifetime, the stronger they pull. And here's the other advantage in setting goals, so that these goals begin to pull you in that forward future direction. They pull you through all kinds of downtime, all kinds of nighttime experiences, all kinds of winters. You can much more easily survive the next crisis, the next winter of your life, if you have well set goals finely tuned, places you want to go, things you want to do, people you want to meet, skills you want to develop, fortune you want to make, benevolence you want to engage in. If all of that becomes powerful and clear and you're on your way, I promise you, no matter what happens, those goals will pull you through. You won't be lost in the middle because you'll be able to see beyond. Here's the goal and whatever it takes to get there, I will do. So I was doing my daily work, cleaning the guns and going to the shooting range, marching 20 miles a day and crawling around up hills with weapons, running at five in the morning with heavy combat boots and all of this stuff. And when everyone just almost drops dead at night, and is totally exhausted. I worked out three hours and got up early in the morning again to do my sit-ups and my push-ups and my chin-ups. There was a clear conflict, a dilemma, because the lifting was not a traditional sport for them. They didn't like the idea. They didn't even have the equipment. I had to go and figure out every way possible to do dips between chairs or put a bar across two chairs and do upside down rowing. Everyone would say, this is the wrong direction that I'm going, or I'm in a dream world, that I'm useless. But whatever it was, I said, I'm going to break through that. No matter what it takes, I needed to reach that goal that vision that I had of being a world champion. And I want you really right now, once again, to start thinking about your goals and about your dreams. And as you begin to envision them, one of the things that I think that's very important that we have to always go back to, as you look at your goals and dreams, and, and I want you to expand them, and, and it's very important to realize that I, I found that most people fail in life, not because they aim too high and miss, most people fail in life because they did just like I did for so many years. They aimed too low and hit. They didn't believe in themselves. 
So I want you right now, as we begin to think about the lessons and all the things that you've experienced and all of the comments and stories and strategies and lessons that you've had, I think it's time to revisit and look at your goals and dreams and let's raise the bar. I remember as a kid, we would be in the backyard and, and we would play jump and somebody would get on one side of the stick, my sister and then my brother, we would run and we'd jump over it. And then they say, raise it up a little bit higher. We have to back up and we run and we'd jump over it again. And then we say, raise it up a little higher. And the higher it, it got, we have to begin to change our approach and how we're going to get over the bar. And that's the same thing in life. And so right now, I want you to think about your goals and dreams as you begin to raise them a little higher. And I want you to say with me, it's possible. It's possible. You know, the easiest thing that I do is speak and train people how to speak. Go into prisons and juvenile detention centers and to high schools and colleges. Speak before thousands of people. I can do that in my sleep. Let me share with you the, the most difficult thing I've ever done in my life, and it took me years to do, and that was to believe that it was possible, to believe that I can do it. Given my circumstances, born in an abandoned building on a floor, being adopted, being labeled educable, mentally retarded, failing twice in school, no college training, never worked for a major corporation, to believe that I had something of value to say that somebody would want to listen to me, to believe that, that somebody would pay me to talk to them. H have you ever thought about something you wanted to do and, and you talk yourself out of it? I, I, I remember going to see Zig Ziglar, who I consider the number one motivational speaker on the planet, and Dr. Norman Vincent Peale when he was alive, and Robert Schuller. I, I used to see them and I would be so pumped up and inspired after hearing Jim Rohn, who recently passed, one of the great motivational speakers of all time, and, and Charlie Tremendous Jones. And, and I, I would go to my car pumped up, saying, yes, 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 I can. And then after a while, my mental conditioning would kick in. And I would say, Les Brown, you can't do that. You don't have a college education. Les Brown, you can't do that. You don't even know who your parents are. Les Brown, you can't do that. You failed twice in school. Come on. You ever thought about something you wanted to do and, and you talk yourself out of it? There's a proverb that says, if there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm. That's why it's important that you make it a point every day to listen to Paul, to listen to me, to review these lessons, to, to get them deep, not only in the conscious mind, but the subconscious mind, and get them in your spirit. Well, how often should I do it? Do it until you are producing the results. That's how often you should do it. And, and you never stop, because once you stop, that's when those negative thoughts will come back. Once you stop, that's when you will begin to doubt yourself. Once you stop, I'm telling you what I know. Yes. Every day, it's a selling job on you. It's possible. I can do this. I can make this happen. No matter how bad it is or how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. It's possible. Yes, your dream is possible. Say that to yourself every day. Feed your mind with words that you write and words that you hear and words that you speak to yourself. Feed your faith and your doubts will starve to death. Say to yourself, it's possible. It's possible. It's possible. Even when you have no evidence to point to, say to yourself, it's possible. There's nothing as powerful as a made up mind. It's a struggle sometimes to do that, especially when you have people around you telling you that it's not possible, that you can't do it. And they're constantly pointing out your failures of the past, constantly reminding you of all of the things that you don't have going for you. I'm reminded of, of a story of, of two little boys that were playing on, on some ice during the winter. And, and, and as they got further out on this ice, one fell through the, the thin ice. And, and so the little fellow that was still on top of the, the ice, he was trying to save his, his little buddy. And he couldn't reach him. He was trying to pull him. He could see him through the thin ice as he got further away from him, struggling. 
and, and he couldn't reach him and he's trying to break the ice and he couldn't do it. And he looked around and he saw a tree in the distance and he ran and, and he got up on the tree and, 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 and he pulled and broke down an enormous sized branch and came back and, and savagely began to beat that ice and broke it and, and miraculously he saved his friend. And when the paramedics came and they were able to revive this little boy, they were scratching their heads, they're trying to figure this out, said, how, how could this little pruny fellow go up in a tree and break off a branch this size and then come back and beat and break the ice and save his friend? They thought it was just miraculous, it was baffling. And an old guy who was there said, I can tell you how he did it. And they said, how? How did he do it? And he said, there was no one here to tell him that he couldn't do it. Whoa. What could you do? What could I do? What could all of us do if we did not have the naysayers in our lives? That, that, that we believe naively like that little boy that it was possible. What would you do if, if, if failure was not on the table? Do you realize that 87% of people allow the fear of failure to outweigh their desire to succeed because they've been convinced by the evidence, by being practical, by being logical, by being realistic. I did that. Leslie, yes. You're going to speak for corporations, yes. Leslie, do they have a college education? Yes. Do you? Wesley, you know that I don't have a college education. Leslie, are these people experienced? Yes. Are there people with PhDs and MBAs that they could choose? rather than choose you. Yes. So you don't have a college education. You have no experience. You're talking about becoming a speaker and they're going to reach over people with PhDs and MBAs and years of experience and choose you. Are you being realistic? Come on, Leslie. Come on, Leslie. You can't do this. My, my brother, <laughs> he is, he's a wonderful person. And, and, and he constantly reminded me that I, I couldn't do what I'm doing now. And, but that really wasn't the bad part. The real bad part was I convinced myself that I couldn't do it. Not only because of those things that he pointed out, being practical and realistic, but also that within myself, I didn't believe what Mike Williams, my mentor, said was possible for me. Have you ever had somebody who believed and saw something for you that you didn't see for yourself? And here's how I escaped that. I discovered that sometimes you have to believe in somebody's belief in you until your belief came.